Welcome to this ICF Slalom podcast episode, part of the series running until the Paris 2024 Games. We bring you the inside stories from around the globe from the people who make canoe slalom so special. Here's your host, John Gregory. Thanks for joining me again for this latest episode recorded after the Laseo World Cup and in the run-up to the ICF World Championships in London. Delighted to welcome three race winners from this season, Rafi Ivaldi from Italy, Ryan Wesley from Great Britain and Aliska Mintelova from Slovakia. Winners in Laseo were Peter Kauser from Slovenia, Aliska Mintelova, Rafi Ivaldi and Jess Fox from Australia. So I must comment on some individual performances, including Rio Olympic champion Mylène Chirot and Mikel Trave, both who were the fastest in their semi-finals on their home course. Jess Fox was so quick in the C1 final that she won despite four seconds in penalties. So series leaders after the fourth World Cup race are Jiri Priskovic from the Czech Republic, Benjamin Savsek from Slovenia, and Jess Fox in both women's kayak and canoe. I start today welcoming Italy's Rafi Ivaldi to the podcast. Congratulations uh, on your gold in C1 at the World Cup 4 in Laseo. Uh, tell us about that race weekend. Yeah, uh, it was special, very special. We got into into the race after a very long time of uh, just training. Well, actually, I did one race in Bratislava, but still uh, far away from all the World Cup uh, races and like the World Cup level. So yeah, I, I worked a lot the entire the entire off season to 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 get ready for 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 the last part, of course, of the season. And it was uh, I started on Thursday was the qualification run, and I I wasn't really happy about it. Uh, I I didn't feel like I I was in the position where I wanted to. Like not not in the position. I mean uh, the results, but uh, but while paddling, I didn't feel like I was uh, paddling the way I trained for and the way I wanted to. So yeah, it was a reset for the semi final, and in the semi final I really felt like I was doing uh, what I was able to. This allowed me to to go to the final with more. Uh, I was more confident in the final, but still like not really. I didn't know what to expect. Uh, from the final because last year I made a few a few World Cup finals and never I was never able to to achieve my best performance during the um, during the race like during the final. But this time I also felt like I was going a little bit too much in my final race in my final run. I was going a little bit too much and I said okay. I remember just like after exiting from the from the first upstream. I was like, okay, you need to come down and just uh, reset and go to the finish line just in another way because like that you are going with too many energy and it's not going to work. So at the end, I was able to to finish the run and other guys made also some mistakes. So at the end, I was able to take the win. Okay, well, c- congratulations. It was nice to see you there. So, I mean, we've seen you on the podium before. Uh, I mean, you took a bronze at the first World Cup in Prague, but I mean, that's 2017. So it feels like a little while ago. Yeah, yeah. I was really young at the time. I was only 19. It was my first World Cup final and I already got a medal and it was crazy. I was a completely different paddler back then. Like back then, my father just came back from Brazil and we started working together. And so that was our first race together, like first World Cup together. And we just got like the first medal and I was on the podium with uh, Tassiadis and and with Benush, which were my two idols, like I, uh, I watched them since I was a since I was a kid, and and being on the podium with them was just amazing. And then I got lost a little bit. It was a long time away from the podium, and I never take for granted the fact that I would have come back on the podium. But at the end, it happened, and I hope that it won't take six more years to go to to come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you're still battling out with the same people uh, who are going to be uh, featuring uh, this season and in the Worlds in Lee Valley uh, as well. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, the last uh, C- Italian uh, C1 World Cup winner, I think, was uh, Roberto Calangonzari uh, in Tarsen yeah. 2019, I think. He was the first one in to win the to win a World Cup gold for, for our country in C1. It was like a special... A special one it was like really special we we all seen that uh, it it is possible to do it the movement grow a lot 
like in Italy in the last years, like especially in C1, where we never had like a big uh, career, like a big uh, with big names before. He, I think, he was one of the first first good paddler that finally arrived uh, in C1 in our in our country. And then now a lot of young. He, he of course inspired many young young athletes. And now the C1 in Italy is quite huge. It's getting bigger. Uh, the selection are getting harder and harder every year, every year. And also we have many like young guys also in the under 23 and juniors, like with Martino Barzon, Flavio Micozzi. They are all like paddlers that can take medal. And it's really nice. Like it's, it's inspiring and I'm happy to be part of this movement that is growing a lot. And, and yeah, I feel proud. And if I can give back something to the people like with this medal, I, I'm just happy and proud. Yeah, it's good observation, actually. Yeah, I mean, uh, Italy has uh, incredible pedigree and heritage in uh, kayak with the two Olympic uh, gold medals, of course. But yeah, I mean, canoe uh, women's uh, C1 is, is also seemingly taking off. We're seeing uh, a number of your uh, your team up there in finals and podium. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, like, of course, C1 women is much younger. It's a much younger category than C1 men. So it's normal that it doesn't have, like, huge history uh in our country but as soon as the c1 girls arrived on the on the parkour then then the a project started uh, in italy and they they started working with these young ladies and uh, at the end it was like a good um they did like pretty good job and now they they have like three major like young girls but that are already strong and capable of taking finals and even medals and i think that that's the job that it has that we need to do in every category you know you need to start from the very bottom when people are very young and just uh, help them create a group and make them enjoying paddling together and this is what will bring like the most the most finals and medals but also like the best atmosphere possible Okay, well, well, like like many people in the sport, I've known your dad for for a very long time, so I've heard you remark a bit before about watching your dad paddle uh, in Verona uh, as a little boy. Obviously, Verona Canoe Club Verona is uh, very famous as well. But um, I mean, he's obviously had a huge impact on your paddling career. But I believe that you're now live and train um, a few hours west in uh, Ivrea. Yeah, yeah, my dad were like was one of of course my dad and my brother were two of the most impact impacting figures in my in my career. Just I remember paddling in my dad's boat uh, when I was, I think, three years old. As soon as I got the first memories of my life, one of those are like paddling in the inside the boat of my dad. He he had a huge impact, but not only because of that, but also because what he teached me. I remember that he was just trying to make me enjoying the sport, and he never pushed me too hard, like to do to do my sport. He made me try, like he and my mom. I need to thank them because they make me try everything, like every kind of sport. I did basketball, judo. I did circus for many years. And and so at the end, I it was my decision, you know. And that's the best thing because I just wanted to to follow to follow my dad, to follow because he, like he, he used to bring me at the races and it was amazing. Like watching these paddlers winning was my dream. And and actually, he he trained Spain. He stopped training in Spain in 2008. So when I was young, I used to go to Seu a lot. And I used to go on these like red boats. Like it was like red, uh, like rafts. Yeah, inflatable and, kayaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I used to to paddle on those, on, on this course, like on La Seu. And I remember simulating like the races in in the course and then simulating also the um, the podium celebration like i remember going on the podium like i was like okay no one is watching me i can simulate to go on the first step and celebrate and i was doing that on la Salle, so it's nice that now it happened there he, he is such a special person he has such a such a special view of our sport i think he he passed me that and i need i am very grateful to him and yeah verona is it's a special place. Uh, I will always be very, like Verona will be always have a place in my heart. And as soon as I can, I just, when when I can, I just go back there. And I love to still, I still love to paddle there. But now the main center is in Ivrea. And I, I also love to stay in Ivrea. And it's a good place, I think. It's different. Of course, it's 
is special. Uh, is uh, of course the best place to be in Italy. Uh, you but you still need to move a lot and try different courses. I love both you and Verona. Um, so I understand uh, you're in London training at Lee Valley for World Championships this month at the moment. So, um, yeah, which actually was one of your nine World Cup finals was at Lee Valley back in 2019. So uh, how are you finding the course? Has it changed in while you've been away? Just a little bit like we spend a lot of time here during the the last year it changed a little bit but not but not much the most important thing is like uh, to have like the right idea of the water how it works and i have it it's really nice place i love this course it's just amazing to train here did the last training camp in uh, july here and i work with ryan wesley we did a lot of technical session together and it was amazing to train with him because he's a local one and and I, I really like this place. I like this course. Last year, I also managed to get a medal at the at the ICF ranking race. I know this course, but of course, like we can never say anything because like our sport is so complicated. We have so many factors and I just enjoy to be here and to race here and then we will see what will happen. Okay, well, the C1 uh, semi-final and final uh, at Lee Valley. Uh, is going to be hotly contested with some many of the people that you've you've probably mentioned already. I just want to thank you for for inviting me. Rafi already mentioned our next guest, Ryan Wesley, C1 men winner from the European Championships, who it seems has been waiting for an invitation to the podcast. So Ryan, uh, welcome to the ICF Silent Podcast. Um, it's been quite a year for you. Um, well, I guess first of all, congratulations on getting married. Uh, and also winning much. the senior European title. So a busy summer. Um, what do you recall of the European Games in Krakow? Uh, probably my first sort of experience of being part of Team GB, I guess. That was, you know, really noticed the difference there. They, like, take care of you. we got lots of nice free kit. Um, they really, like, make you feel special as an athlete, which is cool. Um, and the European Games as well have been, like, a multi-sport environment and, like, how much effort has been put into the event in general was really cool uh it's just yeah a good event to be part of what are the race itself i mean you took that title so talk us through a little bit of uh what you remember of that the main thing was at the training for the world cup in tartson a couple of weeks before in about three weeks before i messed up on the top drop and pulled my shoulder quite badly and i had to i had to fly home from tartson had an mri it basically came back as like yeah your shoulder is terrible but you haven't done any new damage to it so then it was, I don't know, a week and a half, a week basically at home of a lot of physio stuff. So I was back in Lee Valley on my own with the physio working, doing lots of different things, managed to get back on the water and was like, oh, I think I'll be okay. Then flew out on the Sunday night. So I've got to crack out pretty late. Um, fortunately, it's a place I've been plenty of times before. Very similar to like Nottingham. So quite happy paddling there. But yeah, I think once I got there, I was just really happy to be there and racing thought I'd be missing it didn't want to have to give the kit back and yeah I think like that injury and kind of going through that um, I knew I'd had a really good winter uh, with Campbell Walsh coming back over been like a real big impact on my paddling the same with Joe Clark as well but yeah, the races hadn't really gone my way but then I came into that cracker race is just like no expectations no pressure on myself it was like oh, I'll just try and do some good runs got myself in the final and I kind of always feel like when I'm in the final I can go out there and put a good run down didn't expect it to be that good. Didn't really, definitely didn't expect to see that time when I went over the finish line. And then I had absolutely no thought when I went over the line that that was going to be good enough to medal or win. And it was like people kept going down, down and down. Can't believe this is going to happen again. We've seen you on the podium uh, before at the last World Championships at Lee Valley back in 2015, amongst others. You mentioned Campbell. So, I mean, what way has your paddling evolved in those last eight years? In those last eight years... A lot. I think watching my run back from that race, I have no idea how that managed to get onto the podium. Yeah, I think just better in every way, really. <laughs> like So much experience. I think in, in canoeing, experience is like so important. Having done so many more races since then, just so much more capable and dealing with so many different types of things. Uh, and obviously a lot more time spent on Lee Valley as well. So yeah, hopefully I can do something similar again. Certainly feel like I'm a lot better, but I'm sure everybody else is as well. Most recently, we've seen you in the final, the World Cup race in Laseo. It was only earlier this month. Uh, you made that final. I, I mean, I know Seo is one of your favourite courses. About two weeks before Seo, I was playing uh, playing football. Like I play football once a week, just a friendly game. And I got tackled and um, did my ankle in really badly. 
I wasn't able to get in a C1 for about two and a half weeks leading up to that race. Fortunately, Joe lent me his kayak and I was um, paddling that around on Lee Valley for a while, uh, which I'm terrible at. But yeah, so it was just out in sail. I was happy to be out there, happy to be in a boat that I felt like I could paddle. And then, yeah, very, very happy with my result with all the things going into it. Would have been nice to get a little bit faster onto the podium, but yeah, I was happy with my performance. The only thing I didn't like was sneaking into the final in 10th. Spend a lot of time sitting around waiting to see if anyone's going to protest anything off or anything like that. So hopefully in Lee Valley, I'll be much more comfortable into the final. I'm sure you'll also get lots of support from your club, uh, Low Wolf, um, up north. Yeah, yeah, I do. I hear a lot. I hear a lot from some of the guys that I used to paddle with up there. And I'm sure plenty of them will be down there supporting. Um, but also just like family members that normally can't find the time to like fly away to all these races will be able to get up to this one. So many like people from the, the slalom community over the years will be around. Cool to see some faces I haven't seen in a while. And I'm sure they'll put on a really good display as a crowd. And it'll be, be really nice to race in front of that home crowd. I love that the noise. I love the like idea of kind of showing off for, you know, having a crowd to perform for. So I'm really looking forward to it. Okay. Well, it worked back in 2015 for you. Kayak Cross has come into the mix now. I mean, I mean you're a C1 paddler, but are you trying your hand at, at Kayak Cross? in a kayak and how's that going not yet not yet i if i make the olympics and there's a potential that i'll get the opportunity to race it if we don't qualify on the extra spots and if i'm lucky enough to find myself in that position then i'll definitely give it some training i just think there's no way that i'll be able to keep up with some of those guys so i've yeah focused on my c1 career i think if i hadn't had the injuries i probably would have started it a while ago just it's quite good fun to try new things um but yeah not not much training in it yet uh no I'd say thank you to my wife alexandra for uh yeah, putting up with me traveling all over the place and uh, yeah, letting me be like a slob like I'm in the hotel room at home for the next couple of weeks into the race, doing all the hard work for me. With Home Worlds, yeah, I mean, you probably spent more time at home this year than is often the case if you had Worlds or kind of, yeah, Olympics overseas, you'd be spending a lot more time out of the country. Yeah, it's really nice, really nice having those extra extra bit of time at home. Yeah, in a way, I don't like, obviously, when I'm traveling, I'm normally sharing a room with Joe. And we're just sitting around playing Xbox all day. Whereas here I have to like still, you know, keep up my side of the bargain, still live like a normal person. Uh, I have to cook food sometimes, very rarely. It's definitely a different experience, but yeah, it's super nice to be at home and so much more relaxing. And having like full, like when you're away, you quite often don't really have like full freedom. You don't really know the area, you don't know what to do. Whereas here I can, you know, do whatever I want and get to go paddling on Lee Valley every day, which is awesome. I mean, the fact that you're paddling now on Lee Valley from where you began, I, actually, I think in Exeter, Southwest, it's been quite a journey. Yeah, it's amazing to think the facilities that we have now versus when I when I was starting to paddle, it was like flat water purely. And then when I moved up to Yorkshire, like we were getting onto some smaller courses, the 1995 World Championships course. Um, and now seeing how the facilities have developed to the one at Lee Valley, it's like almost a different sport. Um, well, it is a different sport in a lot of ways. As a British team, I think we're so fortunate to have that venue, especially when it comes to racing here. I think hopefully we'll prove that we've got a big advantage, big home advantage on this type of water. And yeah, it gives you a lot of confidence going into the race. Last today, I welcome back Tokyo Olympian Eliska Mintelova from Slovakia. Eliska, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, last time we heard from you, you had just won the European title. You then took the under-23 title later the same year. So congratulations now on your first World Cup Series race win earlier this month in Laseo. Interestingly, you also won a previous World Cup medal, also at the Laseo course. Yeah, uh, thank you. I think it was a very good uh, race. And uh, semi-final, I was a little bit uh, nervous. Uh, the semi-final, right, and the beginning of the course didn't didn't go well for me. But uh, from the middle of section, I started to feel better. And uh, in the finish line, I was a little bit frustrated because the time. I was fourth in the start line. I was still uh, 19 uh, girls. And uh, after my run, I didn't even paddle after the ride. I, I started uh, packing my kayak. It was so funny. Then uh, oh, my coach told me that and I advanced it to, to the final. 
I said, wow, no, <laughs> no, it's not possible because with uh, four penalty seconds, it's not possible. I I start uh, preparation uh, for the final. The final uh, race ball was very good. I think I had some uh, mistakes in the upper and uh, lower part, but uh, I feel very good all all week um, on the water, and uh, I wanted to show in the race. Okay, well, it, it was perfect, and yeah, you took the the race win, which is your first World Cup win. So, congratulations. We hope it is the first of many World Cup wins for you. Yeah, <laughs> I I believe what, but it's a long way <laughs> to go. We are see- seeing you more consistently up there in the final, uh, including the Augsburg Worlds last year. You seem to have a flair in the bigger white water courses. Um, I don't know, perhaps from your home site in Liptovsky? My winter preparation was uh, very good. I uh, starting uh, cooperation with uh, mental coach and uh, with my uh, trainer in uh, in the gym, maybe some uh, swimming, and uh, after we was in the reunion and I feel very good on the water and I feel uh, better than uh, last year. Do do you, do you like the bigger white water? Yeah, uh, especially in uh, Livali, is this is the best course on the water. So you are in Lee Valley now, uh, in preparation for the world. So it's an important race for many reasons, including Olympic quota. Does it also contribute to your Slovakian team selection? Uh, yes. After after medal in uh, Laseu, and this was a very good start in the internal. Uh, Olympic uh, selection, but uh, it's still a long way because uh, two races to go. Uh, London is a very hard course. The hardest part of the course is uh, in the lower part, where you don't, don't have much energy uh, anymore. Yeah, it's a very tiring uh, course. Uh, I know from experience. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about a social media post last week, uh, which translated into English said, and I'll paraphrase, only cooperation and mutual humanity push us forward to achieve our dreams. Every day, the water reminds us how important it is to be friendly and supportive of one another. And I hope that one day I will also be an inspiration to everyone to be good to each other, not only on the water, but also in everyday life. Now, I know that's translated into English, but that seems to say a lot about you and your values. Can I only win if I have a good people around around me who support me and show me the way? And uh, I think that uh, people forget uh, what it's like to be human. And uh, in cooperation with uh, Orange, we want to show the people are the key to be a happy life, you know. But I think what you're saying is it's your attitude away from the water. So it's not just about your life on the water. It's how you interact yeah. and appreciate and are surrounded by other people who support you and how much you recognize that. Anyway, I think it's lovely. Well, we think you are an inspiration already, and I'm sure you are. Uh, an inspiration and a motivator to many young paddlers. C- congratulations uh, on uh, the World Cup win in Laseo, and we hope you win many more World Cups and good luck in Lee Valley. Thank you so much. Thanks to my guests today, Aliska Mintelova, Rafi Avaldi and Ryan Wesley. Thanks to Aidan Johnson for help with sound editing. Next, we will be bringing you short daily episodes from the ICF Canoe Slalom World Championships live from Lee Valley. Short episodes recapping the day's events and preview of the next day's competition. See you on the bank. Stay safe. That's it for now. But please subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or Audible. And please don't forget to share and leave a review too. In the meantime, keep it fast and clean.